I wanted to say Merry Christmas to you guys. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to drop out of our last, our series that we're in, Choices. Anybody come to that? <laughs> Have y'all listened to those? I don't know, man. That's just like talking to me. So like, if you, if you get anything out of it, good for you. But those are for me anyway. Um, today, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that I don't think I've ever done in this church, and that's give a Christmas message on Christmas. Just crazy, isn't it? On Easter, don't expect an Easter message. On Christmas, don't expect a Christmas message. But today's a different. We're going we're gonna to talk about Christmas today, and the reason is because I think so many times we miss what this whole thing is about. Um, we, we get the idea of giving, we get the idea of, of the season, we get the idea of the birth of Jesus, we get the idea of the wise men, we get the idea of the sheep, we get the idea of the shepherds, we get the idea of the angels, uh, we, we get the idea of the manger and the donkeys, we get the idea of the star, right? We understand kind of the story, but did we miss the big picture? And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. Did we miss the big picture? The Bible tells us that, that God says in his, in his words, which is, which is his scriptures in the Old Testament, God tells us that there will be a day come when I will reconcile the world to me. And I will be their God and they will be my people and I will make my dwelling among them. And that was a big deal, right? I mean, yeah, that's a big deal. Because everything got broken. A few months ago I gave a message about how everything got broken. Y'all remember that? About the Garden of Eden, the trees, you remember that? Everything got broken. And when everything got broken, uh, because mankind fell, heaven and earth were broken. Man and God were separated. And the plan from the beginning has been that God wanted and desperately wanted to reconcile His people to Himself. I want to be your God, and I want you to be my people. That's what he, he's, His deepest desire was. Then when we start this Christmas story, I think it's in the book of Matthew where it says this. It says, you'll give birth to a child and you will call His name Emmanuel. God with us. Now, a lot of people would say, Emmanuel, God with us, means Jesus is God. And, and that, that's neither here nor there on how you feel about that. The important thing was that God is with us. See, I think it's a bigger picture than just God was with us or, or God sent His Son or God sent the Messiah Maybe it's even bigger than that. See, because for thousands of years, God wasn't with us. Thousands of years, God wasn't with us. God was in heaven and man was on earth and man and God were separated. And man's desire was for God and God's desire was for man, but there was a, there was a flaming sword. There was... There was a flaming sword and an angel guarding the path, guarding the way back to God, and heaven and earth were separated. But all of a sudden, man, there's this time that shows up, and everybody had been waiting for this time, and there was all kinds of signs and, and things that were, were showing themselves to be like, this is the season for this. And then an angel appears and says, you'll call his name Emmanuel, God is with us. See, I don't think that the birth of Jesus is the significant part of the story. That's your Christmas message. You can go tell all your friends that. Because <laughs> you know how it is this time of year. You got your holy moly Christians that are like, Jesus is the reason for the season. And like, and then you got other people, take the Christ out of Christmas, happy holidays and all that stuff. So there's this massive war, you know, goodwill toward men. We get that. <laughs> this is just crazy to me. 
that, that Christians will be so angry this time of year about people who don't believe like they do. Baffles me. But, neither here nor there, I think that we may have missed the whole point. See, the birth of Jesus, the significance of that is that God was reconciling himself to man. And that through this Messiah, man and God would no longer be separated. That he would come and make his dwelling in, on this earth and in and among his people. And his kingdom would arrive. And see, we miss that this is about a baby being born, but it's more than a baby being born. It's a kingdom being reconciled. It's a kingdom being put back together. It's what all of humanity and all of life that was messed up and broken, that was separated, that was, that was out of sorts, all of a sudden comes down to this one place in time and the kingdom of heaven is birthed among men. Do you get that? God is no longer there. Do you get that? Through the Messiah, God is here. He is here. Like we read about this in Acts. When Messiah goes to the cross, he dies. And he says, man, I'll come again. And, and then he says, as you saw me go, I'll return again. Like then they saw him return into spirit. And as spirit, Messiah comes in Acts. Remember the story? And like... The kingdom of heaven and God, and, and Jesus had said this all through his ministry, he says, I will make my dwelling within you, and you within me, and the Father within us. And all of a sudden, man, there's a wind and there's flames, and God comes and he dwells within people. He's no longer far from us, is he? Like, and if you think about how this works, man, he's right here. Like we get this sense that God is present. And even in our down times, and even when we're broken, and even in the worst of times, we get this sense that God is present, don't we? Isn't there this longing or drawing? Isn't there this deep peace that we sense, that we know about? Maybe we can't achieve it. Maybe we're not achieving it. Maybe we're not walking into it. Maybe we haven't received all of that. But don't we get that sense that God is here among us? And that His, His kingdom is here among us. And so I, I think that when we start to look at what Christmas is, it's the coming of the kingdom of heaven. It, it's not just the birth of the Savior so, so that I can say a prayer and someday when I die go someplace else. No, it's the coming of the kingdom. It's God reconciling mankind to himself, which is no insignificant thing, right? Do you realize this is something that we could never do for ourselves? We could never make ourselves right with God. He made us right with himself. Isn't that amazing? That's the love of God. Him making himself right with us. And us right with him. So I think about this stuff all the time, and I'm like, if the kingdom of heaven is here, then why are things so jacked up? And I'm thinking, well, because of us. Right? Do we act as if the kingdom of heaven has come, if God is at hand, that he dwells among us and within us? We treat like God like we're still in the Old Testament, like he's far away. Right? But... We go and live and make our own decisions and then, then we'll pray to God every once in a while as if He doesn't exist anywhere close to us or around us. But His kingdom is all around us. And we have to say, well, what is His kingdom? If it's here, then why does things look the way they look? Well, well the kingdom is where the king rules and reigns. And then you have to ask yourself, does the king rule and reign? Or do I? See, that's a, that's a big issue. Because I think more times than not, we like to rule and reign, right? 
And then we would say, God, where's your kingdom? And he says, well, it's where I reign. He said, your kingdom's Jack, though. <laughs> like, obviously. <laughs> You're just right there, man. <laughs> God wants so bad to rule and reign in this kingdom. But see, we can't. We can't rule and reign. We can't decide. We can't choose. And we can't treat people the way we want to treat people and say that God's kingdom is ruling and reigning. He isn't far. He's here. But this should be the season where we're reminded of that, that God's kingdom is here. I like where it says, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. But why don't we have that, especially in this season? I think about this a lot. And when I think about stuff a lot, then it gets real bad because I tend to spew that stuff out. And so what I've been thinking about a lot is that we just treat people horribly. Why do we do that? Why do we treat people the way we treat people? It, is the kingdom of heaven here? I mean, is it true? Does God dwell among us and within us? I think for a lot of us, we wish he didn't because then he would leave us alone, right? But he does. And, and here's what I noticed. When I come to talk to you, I come to talk to you from a place. And this is the place that I found myself recently. There was a mom and her kid at Walmart. And the kid was probably... I don't know, man. Just that age, it just wears you out, whatever age that is. I can't, you know, all of them. <laughs> Till 40. I don't, I don't know what else. But uh, this mom, man, this kid really wasn't doing that much, but this mom was just, ah, oh, man, just yelling and gropping and jerking and slinging and just, man, just ruthless. And I was a little embarrassed. I, get, I was a little like, you know, it is extremely awkward when that stuff's going on. And, uh, and here's what I found. I saw just as this happened, this, this person walks up and says, I need to get by or something. Oh, she wanted something off a taller shelf. And it's like, oh, sure, let me get that for you. She, there you go. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. You little brat. It's like... <laughs> And so here's what I started thinking, and I noticed this in my own life. Why do we treat those that are closest to us the worst? Why do we treat people in our own house who we live with all the time worse than we treat complete strangers? And I'm not saying we should treat strangers horribly, but... <laughs> when somebody's like, yeah, freedom, man. I... <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is... Why don't we say please and thank you and be nice to, to our wives, to our kids? If, if God's ruling and reigning in our life, isn't love trumping everything? Isn't that, isn't that the passion that's driving everything? And if that's true, then why, do we, why are we mean? And I mean this. Why are we mean to the people closest to us? And we'll give a free pass to a stranger. And that bothers me. And I don't think we should live that way anymore. I don't, I don't think we should be that way. I think if the kingdom of heaven is truly going to rule and reign, that we've got to start treating each other with love and respect. And, and here's what I believe is missing in the kingdom of heaven on earth today. Niceness. Why can't we just be nice? Is it that hard? I mean, do you ever think about that? Like, are you nice? Or are you just mean? And, there, and there's more people, what I've seen today, there's more people that are mean than are nice. And that, that bothers me. 
I watch TV and I'm out on the street, I see things and people are mean to each other. They're mean. And you know who the meanest people are? The ones who are claiming the kingdom. That's what I found. It's sad. It's sad. Listen, I'm going to free you of something today so you don't have to be so mean. I'm going to free you up. As a follower of Jesus, you don't have to always be right. And if you don't have to always be right, you don't have to be so mean to everybody else. There's some reason we think we've got all the answers and we're right and everybody else is wrong, and because they're wrong, we should treat them however, however they deserve, right? But that's not what the kingdom looks like. What about peace on earth, goodwill to men? Why can't we just let things go? Why is it so hard to just let things go? Go. The hardest scripture in the Bible happens to be my favorite. It's the Apostle Paul, and he's, he says this. You ready for this? You might want to write this down. Why can't you just let yourself be wronged? Well, that stinks. What about the judgment? What about the judgment of God? You're not God. <laughs> You're not God. I think if we could learn to let things go. You know what? If somebody don't like your manger scene, oh well. What does it matter? If somebody doesn't like your star, if somebody don't like you saying Merry Christmas, if somebody don't like those things, so what? Does it make God any less real in your life? You know what I think the problem is? I think the problem is all that stuff is our identity to ourselves that makes us think we're Christian. Like if I don't have this stuff, I might not be Christian. Let me tell you, Christian is something that we are from the inside. It's not something we have to prove to people or show to people. It's something that is known because of who we are deep inside. When we have peace on earth and goodwill toward men, that is the Messiah, the Christ in us, living his kingdom out in this world. And it's way different than putting on all of the Christian bling, fighting with people over, over what's politically correct to say or not say. Man, when can we just get over it? If you don't have, you know, the right kind of tree or the right kind of star or the right kind of angels or whatever, or a nativity scene or whatever, if you have Santa Claus, you're the devil. Look, Christmas, what's wrong with Santa anyway, man? I mean, there's nothing wrong with being jolly and fat. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like a good thing. Some guy who's going to swoop around and get presents out? Oh, I'm against that. <laughs> what's the deal? I don't understand why we make this huge thing over the little things, but we forget the most important things. Love your neighbor. Help those who can't help themselves. Be the person of peace. Are you that? Are you the person of peace? Because the person of peace stinks, right? Anybody, I mean, if you're doing that, you know that that, st that role stinks. But that, that should be who we are. The Bible says blessed are the peacemakers. You know what blessed means? Overly, abundantly, extravagantly happy. And so if you sit around a lot like this, 
You're probably not that person. You know, some of us probably should put on some pounds, slip into a red suit, grow a beard, and get jolly. You know what I'm saying? There's worse things in the world. I just want us to know and think about it and consider that this is the greatest time of year. Now, I'm not going to go all theological on you and, you know, well, technically Jesus was born in the spring. I don't care. I don't care because this is the time that we celebrate the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Do you realize that we are empowered to live differently? We don't have to be like everybody else. The coming of the Messiah and the coming of the kingdom gave us the ability to choose to live differently. We can be the people of peace. We can be people of love. We can be the nicest people on the planet. We can. And we should. I have this discussion all the time. People don't believe the kingdom of heaven's here. Which, you know, that's fine. Just call Jesus a liar, whatever. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. <laughs> we don't believe it. Because the church should be it, shouldn't it? And we go to church and we're like, we don't see or feel or experience the kingdom of heaven. And so it can't be real. It can't be here. I don't think, I, th I just feel like we're miss, we've missed so much because, because of the way we act and the way we treat people. Because we're mean, because we're unforgiving, because we're unloving, because we're always right. Because we can't let other people get away with anything because everybody needs to get what they deserve. But that's not, that's not what really what this whole thing is about. Disneyland shouldn't be the happiest place on earth. The church should be, right? But why is there so much fighting and arguing and backbiting and hate and anger and bitterness? Why is there so much confrontation in the church? The center point of peace on the earth. Maybe it's because the church is made up of people and people refuse to surrender their kingdom to let God's kingdom rule and reign. And then if we do that, then we can always say, well, you know, I don't see this or I don't see that, so this can't be like, I walked in and the streets definitely weren't gold. <laughs> this is a whole different kind of heaven. This is the good kind. I want our church to be different. I want you to be different. You know, I, I want your friends, I want when people say, do you know this person? I don't want them to say, oh yeah, I know them. They're crazy. That's what people say about the people sitting next to you. <laughs> Not you, the people around you. That's what people say. I don't want people to say that. I don't want people to say, oh, they go to Driven Life. They're crazy. <laughs> Off. I don't want people to say, you know what I want to say? Those are the nicest people I've ever seen. Those are the nicest people I've ever met. Those people are so nice. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being nice? What's wrong with being loving and good? What's wrong with helping out people? What's wrong with being nice to your wife? What's wrong with being nice to your husband? What's wrong with being nice to your children? See, if we don't start in our homes and we don't start with the people closest to us, then how does the kingdom ever expand from that? 
I have this thing I was telling Sully yesterday. I have this thing like fakeness just like, when I see fakeness, it's just like, poof, it blow. Like I see it instantly. I don't need anybody to tell me or I don't need to give it any time to see what's fake and what's true and what's real, right? I just, they'll be fake to me. I see through you. I see your souls. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't be fake. But aren't we kind of being fake whenever we treat the people closest to us like that and then we go out and say, oh, yeah, Mr. Happy Jolly, whatever. And I'm not saying that we should just carry our mood around all the time and just be grumpy everywhere we go. I'm saying we ought to change where we're coming from. I hope you'll do this. I want you to know that this is a better way to live. It is a better way to live to treat people nice. It is a better way to treat people, to care for people. It's a better way to live when we live out the kingdom of heaven. This is what we're all striving for. This is what we're all longing for. It's what we're all hoping for, right, is the kingdom of God. So for he said, I want to come and dwell among you. So like he brought it to us so we don't have to go to it. Does it make sense? And if he brought it to us, then we've just got to learn how to navigate it. Maybe you were never aware, wow, the kingdom of heaven really is a hand. Like God is here. I can feel him. I can sense him. And if I just walk in his will, then it starts to spread. It gets off of me and gets on to you. We talked about this a few Wednesday nights ago, but I came to the conclusion. People are like, well, what's the kingdom of heaven this? And what if the kingdom of heaven is that? Where does it, where does it look like? What is it, why should it... The kingdom of heaven, this is, this is going to get weird, the kingdom of heaven is you. You want to know what it looks like, catch a glance in the mirror. Why do I say that? Because the kingdom of heaven is where God dwells and rules and reigns. Why would it not be you? And let me tell you something that is real, as real as I'm standing here. There are two kingdoms. And it's not yours and God's. It's his and it's the enemy's. It's heaven or it's hell. And let me be very clear, there is no middle ground. So we're either living out the kingdom of heaven or we're living out the kingdom of hell and advancing it. That's scary, especially if you're doing the kingdom of heaven out in public and the kingdom of hell in your home and can't figure out why it's not working. I hope today that as we go out and as we, as we engage in people, as we experience this week of Christmas, that we will consider that this isn't the birthday of Jesus, but this is the birth of God's kingdom, the restoration of mankind and God. And that the focus of this season shouldn't be a baby in a manger, but it should be, is God ruling and reigning in my life? And when that is put right, Man, everything else in your life is going to come together because the kingdom of heaven is perfect. The kingdom of heaven is fantastic. The kingdom of heaven, is, the way Jesus described it, is it's that most precious thing that you would sell or give up everything else for, whether it's a diamond or, or a, a pearl, the way Jesus described it. It's that thing you'll give up everything else to have. And when we start to realize it's here and we start to experience it, it will change us forever. All right.